In this video, we're going to be discussing text. Now, text is probably the most important aspect of your website. That is what Google and all the other search engines are able to read and perceive and basically calculate what your website is about. So if you want to get ranked in the search engines or have anybody find you basically in the search engines, your text is good to what's going to lead them to you. There are two ways to uh, put text on your page. Now, over here on the left of your toolbox, you have your text tool right here. Or you can go up to your toolbar, click Insert, and then Text. Once that's highlighted, we can scroll out. You get some crosshairs, drag and drop, and then it gives you some default uh, text and actually some instructions double clicked at it. Now without it clicking away from that allows us to do nothing to it. If we hover over click once we're able to move it anywhere we want. Double clicking on it twice then we can edit. Okay now once I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click outside of the, the text box boom and you'll see the toolbar change to the generic toolbar, wherever it was before we started working with our text. Once we double click on the text, it changes into the text tools. Now these text tools are pretty much basic Windows application text tools. We can copy, paste, delete, we could change our fonts. I'm going to change this to uh, Comic Sans. Oops, sorry. First of all, you have to highlight your text. <laughs> Comic Sans. Uh, we're going to change this to, like, uh, let's say, a 14. Okay, we're going to bold it. Let's change the color to this ugly purple. Boom. Okay. So anyway, we could bold, italic, underline, blah, blah, blah. Write justify left justify, center justify, right justify, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, that is just plain center, this is center justify. Um, headers, we can add symbols, copyright notices, registrations, bullet points, find, replace, select all. Find and replace are great when you have a, a large paragraph and let's say you have just one word in the entire paragraph that repeats itself somewhere and you want to change it you can do it once and it'll change it throughout the whole thing lorem ipsum is good when you're designing pages and you want to just put in some filler text doesn't mean anything you just want to create some space to see how it's going to lay out as you're as you're working with the design so let's just say two paragraphs of lorem ipsum okay and there we have our two paragraphs of Laura Nipson. Now once again, we can click out, click on once, and then move this all the way to the top of our page because we have it kind of down. And I'm just moving this up, centering it to the, or moving it up to the uh, upper left-hand corner of the page. Okay? Now, we have our handlebars once we're in editing mode and we can stretch this however we'd like. So I'm going to stretch this out. Double clicking on it and there we go. Finally, we can drag this out and it will reposition itself. Double clicking on it. Once our uh, cursor is clicking we can also click click control a on our keyboard that will highlight all the text should we need to delete it we also have our link uh, tab here so let's just say we wanted to link this particular word out we can link it http let's say www dot google dot com okay okay boom there we go and we'll get into talking about the presets for our links a little bit later but as you can see this is 
a linked piece of text. So we can actually F5 it or preview our page. And there's our text. And if we hover over the top of this, as you can see down here at the bottom, once I hover over it, it'll say google.com. There you go. All right. And that's how you would link your text. Now, let's delete this just because I don't want to deal with it for the moment. Uh, I'm going to control A. I'm going to change everything down to a size smaller that I can deal with. There we go. And change it back to Arial. There we go. And let's change it back to something a little bit more soothing to the eyes, like black. There we go. All right. So now, let's deal with these fonts up here for a second. If we hit, click the arrow key, you will see a listing of fonts here. Now, these, as you'll notice, are not going to be all the fonts that are on your computer. These are all the fonts on your computer that WYSIWYG Web Builder has found to be web safe fonts. Now, web safe fonts mean that 99.9% .9 of other computers around the world are going to have these fonts loaded on their computer. And that's important because you want your website to look the same to each visitor that comes to visit your site. Now you can display more non-website website web safe fonts here, but the, I don't see the purpose in that. The only other purpose in that would be is an alternative option, and that is to change these fonts into a graphic. Now that would be great for a very stylistic purpose and used in limited applications but as I stated before you want the search engines to be able to read what's on your site if the text is changed or converted into an image it can't read them so you'd want to use that option very very sparingly and let me show you what I mean by that I'm going to delete that text box. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to go to insert text. Okay. I'm going to highlight this. And I am going to choose display non website site. You get this warning that says, Are you sure you want to do that? Sure, why not? All right, once it did that, now it opened up every font I have on my computer. I'm gonna find something rather bizarre. Let's do this, where, where was that one? Four, six. There, there, this one here, boom. All right, let's change this one to something bigger so we can all see it, boom. All right, this is, I don't even remember the name. Double click on it, it's Boister Black. All right. We can let's double clicked on it. Object properties, and then we can go in under General tab under our text. That's our text uh, properties. General. We can actually click on here, and this will publish this text as an image. Is we can change it from a GIFT, JPEG, PNG, or GIFT optimized. Okay. Now, like I said, the only reason you want to do that is if you really want to use this font as a, a stylistic aspect of your website. You would not want to do this for all your text. Not even half of it. Not even three fourths of it. I wouldn't recommend it. Number another reason is not only can the search engines not read it, but that text loads longer, so it will take a lot of resources for your page to load. You want your page to load fast. You want people to be able to see it, read it, and get to it. 
You don't want your page taking seconds and seconds to load. So click away and go somewhere else. Okay. So once again, just to reiterate, clicking once on it allows you to move it. Clicking on it twice allows you to edit it and change any aspect that we have up here. Let's center justify this. Let's get back to some web safe fonts. Uh, oops. Courier new is not a pretty font. Um, let's go Georgia. There we go. All right. Let's double click on this or right click on this, go back to our object properties again. We're in the text tab. Now, text boxes can also have, once you're in your style, can also have their own backgrounds. They can have images, they can have solids, they can have gradients, they can have textures. Let's just experiment with a solid for a second. Let's just choose a light color here so you can see. Let's see this green. And our text box has a background. I'm going to go into our object properties again. Style. It can actually have borders. Let's do dashed. Um, the border itself have a width of three. Radius means round corners so we can do some rounded niche corners. We can change the color of course of that dashed border to anything we want. So let's do this. No, let's not do that. Let's do this burgundy color. Okay, that's what that would look like. Go back into our object properties, style. No, let me move this out of the way. You see how cramped that is in there? We can actually go into our padding and we can give it some space. We can give it like five, just randomly picking some numbers. Five pixels on uh, actually the left and right is okay in this particular object. Uh, let's do top and bottom of five, and you'll see this increase here. Okay, boom. See, so we gave it some space there by just adjusting the padding. Uh, object properties, style. So we got a green background, we got a red dashed border with a radius, as you can see it's kind of curved there, we got a radius of 10, the 3 of the width represents the pixels thickness of that border there, um, padding, we had enough padding on the left and right side so I didn't adjust anything there but I adjusted the top and the bottom there to get us 5. And we can actually do a box shadow. Um, and this, let's do an offset uh, here of the X and the Y. And let's do 5 and 5. That'll give us a little bit to the. Okay, that'll give us a little bit to the left, or to the right rather, and to the bottom. And that's what that shadow would look like. But go back into here for a second, real quick. Oh, um, um, and unfortunately, shadow does not have a radius, so it, that's why you're getting that square image. But you should be able to offset that by playing with the blur a little bit here. Let's see if that helps. I uh, added a blur to it. There you go. See that blur takes that that harsh edge off. So. If you're going to use a radius on your border, I would, and, and then you're going to use a drop shadow, I would suggest I would suggest using the um, a blur with that. Sorry, I was losing my train of thought there, but yeah, uh, if you're going to use a box shadow, definitely. Uh, if you're going to have a radius on your on your on your border, I would I would blur it slightly just so it takes it so you can't see that squareness there. And once again, you can also change the color of that drop shadow to whatever you want. Let's do that. See so, all right. So once again, 
Text is a wonderful thing. There's many different features, and we'll go into more of them as we go along. But um, text is your number one feature on your website. And uh, we will uh, discuss different aspects of it as we go along. But this is a basic tutorial on text, how to play with it, how to deal with it. And um, I encourage you, as with every video I do, or should do anyway, is to tell you to explore, to play and get used to it. Click on things you've never clicked on before just to see what they'll do. Um, and you'll find some really, really cool aspects that we will cover these different features more and more as we go along. Stick with us and um, you'll soon be creating some awesome websites. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks.